gets it right most of the time. I mean, not every legislator never gets it right 100% of the time. But I have to say, the things that you stand for, I stand for. And I really got to say, I, I thank you for the things you've done against sexual credit, what you've done against domestic abuse. I like what you, you brought forth, and we'll talk about this, about the partial birth, uh, you know, abortion bill that you brought forth. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the DNA, something I'm concerned about in that, if you can answer that question when we get to it. Let's start off with the partial birth uh, bill that you uh, you brought forward. Uh, is there a reason for that? Is that you're afraid that up in, in, in Washington, D.C., they're going to they're gonna make abortion more lenient again? That is exactly right. I'm just afraid that the federal level uh, will be repealed, and I just feel that we need to have the same ban here in Arkansas. How do you feel... You know, I read the story, I saw the picture in the paper of you sitting next to one of the people who were uh, against that. And, uh, you know, they, they, were, they weren't pleasant, to be honest. How, how, is, how hard is it to sit next to somebody while they're just scathingly attacking you for really nothing, for no truth? Let's just go back. Well, I just have to remember that for every issue I firmly believe in, there's someone as opposed to it as I am for it. And so I go into it thinking that and knowing that, and I just fight with everything I have and everything I believe in. So when you when you sit down to put together this piece of legislation, what are some of the things that you had to think about as you started putting it, you know, putting it all the wording together? Well, with this particular piece of legislation, it's been challenged and struck down by Supreme Court once before. And so my goal with this was to make it as appealing to the Supreme Court and to mirror federal law that has been upheld by the Supreme Court. And right. that's what we did with this legislation. You're speaking of the state Supreme Court, correct? No, the U.S. Oh, Supreme the U.S. Court. Supreme Court struck it down. Yes. Okay, so you went back and looked at why they struck it down and tried to take those, quote, negative things out? Well, I looked at that, and then in 2007, they upheld the federal law. And so this, this bill mirrors federal law that has been upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay, so you just basically follow what they wrote and wrote it in the state that, code. That is right. Okay, how do you how do you feel about it? You think it's going to fly? Oh, it's going to fly. It's already been upheld once. Okay, but has it has it been voted on both the houses now? No. Oh, okay, um, that's it, what I mean. It has to go to Senate Public Health. Okay. Um, I'm not sure with this week being so crazy with its committee meetings and everything with President Clinton coming. Everything's been just different than it has, but anyway, it goes to Senate Public Health, and that will have to go on the Senate floor. And from my understanding, I believe we have the votes in Senate Public Health and on the floor. Okay, good. Let's talk about your DNA bill. That, that, that just came out yesterday, was it not? Correct. I filed it yesterday. All right. Only concern that I have about it is that you make the statement in the bill that when you're arrested, they're going to take the DNA sample. All right, and that if you want that DNA sample destroyed, you have to go in front of a judge to ask to have it done? That is right. Is there any way to rewrite that that says that if you're not found guilty of the crime, that it will automatically be destroyed, that you don't have to petition the court? Because court could say no. I, I had asked the crime lab if that would be possible, and that would put too much of a burden on the crime lab to, to have to watch these cases and then have to go in and systematically figure out how to take out the DNA for those that have not been convicted. But I also would like to say that currently, if you are arrested for a felony charge, your fingerprints are taken and your photo is taken, and those are never destroyed. Those are always on record. And DNA is nothing more than a technologically advanced fingerprint. Yeah. I would roll that back and say, well, I'd like to see the fingerprints destroyed and everything else. Because if you're not guilty, you're not guilty, and it doesn't make sense to me why we would want to keep that information on file. Right now I'm just following what's currently there with our fingerprinting and our photographs. Okay. Domestic abuse package. This is something that you've got pending that, that, that is really a comprehensive package. How about telling my listeners about it? What all is it going to cover? Um, it, it's a victim-friendly domestic violence package that is currently sitting in Senate Judiciary and has been for about two weeks. I am hoping that they meet tomorrow so I can introduce most of them, all of the package. Um, this package includes um, an order of protection bill that will increase the penalty if a person violates that order of protection twice. Currently, a person can violate uh, order of protection as many times as they see fit. They can just daily, hourly 
violate that order of protection and it will only be a misdemeanor. Police hands are tied. They can't do anything. They come up on the scene. They have this violator and they can't do anything. So this will increase that second penalty violation up to a felony charge. Police can then make an arrest, take them to jail, and give the victim some type of chance to get away. I guess the, the obvious question is why do we have to wait for a second time? Why can't the first time be that? Well, and I would like to do that, but we're, we're taking baby steps. Uh, at least we're getting somewhere on the second violation. Not very often, but occasionally you may have someone that violated it um, just to you know, pick up their children or, or make some type of contact like that. And I'm not trying to, to, to put a burden on them. So we are giving them two chances. Now you say the Spankies are sitting in judiciary. Is there a reason why it's been sitting there for two weeks? I mean, is it, do you think that there's people who don't want it to come forward? No, we, we've had a hard time getting a quorum. Um, and I just sit in there patiently every week hoping to get it you know, introduced. I did get a bill out of there last week, and I got another bill almost out of there last week. Uh, they've agreed that if I uh, have an amendment put on it that Senator Johnson agreed to do, then they will get it out very quickly this next meeting. So I've almost got two out. Okay, so you got you got that part on on the package. What about uh, other pieces in this package? I have a bill that will increase the penalty if domestic battery is done in the presence of a child. We did the same thing with the animal cruelty bill. Why not do it with domestic violence? So if you do domestic violence or domestic battery in front of a child, it will now be a felony charge. I have another one that increases the penalty or enhances the penalty to a domestic battery in the second if the victim is 12 or younger or 60 or older. Currently that is in the battery code, but not the domestic battery code. So this will allow domestic battery charges to be filed. Okay, as you, I know that as you get ready to file different things, as you're thinking of putting bills together, you always talk to different people in the Senate and in the House. How does the, you know, what's the temperature in the House and the Senate in this kind of legislation? Most people ask me, why is it taking this long? You know, and that's my answer back, I don't know. I don't know why it's taking this long to, to make this a victim-friendly state. Because we had to wait for you. Well, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> my guest is uh, State uh, Representative Don Creekmore. And uh, Representative, can we take a break here and then we'll come back to you? taking a few calls? Certainly. All right, phone lines are open at 433-0092. Your calls for Don Creekmore. We'll come back here on the Dave Ellswick Show under the dome on KARN. <laughs>